it starts with that declaration statement. It's important to understand that you are declaring from a place of nothing. You're declaring something without really knowing how in the world you're going to achieve the goal that you have. But just as in the Bible, God declared, let there be light. God was light. He declared that into a void, into darkness. He declared it from nothing. And then there was light. You are going to declare who you are physically before there's any uh, evidence to confirm that that's who you are. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! This is episode 175 of the Sales Wolves podcast. And in this episode, we are going to unpack the physical pyramid. Some of you may have seen some of my content going out recently that talks about the five pyramids of human performance. And those are physical, intellectual, wealth, relationship, and spiritual. And I want to unpack the physical pyramid today for you guys, because to me, it's the best place to start. It's the first pyramid for a reason. And that's because when things get off track, when things are chaotic and disarray in your life, nothing can get you back on track like getting in sync with your body and getting your health and fitness to a higher level, to a more disciplined level. And it's also the area that when you go all in on your body, on your health and fitness, it has the largest carryover into every other area of your life. And so that's the reason why I like to start there. And just thinking back to my own life, I, I can remember, um, you know, times being in the worst shape of my life, times being in the best shape of my life. And those two people were very different people. Uh, your confidence level, your energy level, your enthusiasm, uh, just so much changes as you get your physical body in order and you get yourself into peak physical shape. And I know throughout my career selling that my performance uh, was always higher when I was in better shape or at least engaging daily in a physical activity. And so as we start to unpack the physical pyramid, we start with making a declaration. That declaration would be an I am statement. We've talked about this a lot on the sales Wolves podcast, the power in the statements of I am blank did a whole podcast on that. But as it pertains to your physical life, your physical pyramid, that I am statement, it's important to understand that the way you are born into this world is believing and understanding I, I am unbreakable. When you're born, you're full of potential. You're full of, of, potential. Um, it's really, it's the fact that the world has not delivered anything to you yet to let you know that you could be anything but unbreakable. But over the course of years, as you grow up, the world does deliver you um, struggles, obstacles, opinions, thoughts, to where all of a sudden you do feel breakable you do realize that there's plenty of things out there that could break you. But the very essence of who we are is this declaration of I am unbreakable. And so as we look at your physical pyramid, it's, it's critical to, to make this declaration statement because if you don't, you will always go back to your identity and who you are physically. Prime example, let's say I need to lose 50 pounds. Well, if what I am telling myself is I am fat or I am overweight or I am out of shape, then the effort that goes in to me losing weight, getting in better shape, 
I will never truly be able to get beyond what I declare that I am. So I may lose 10 pounds. I may lose 20, 30, 40. I may even lose all 50 pounds. But if my identity is still in this, this space of I am fat or I am out of shape or I am overweight, then not only will I not stay there, more than likely I'll go back right back to where I was, if not even worse. So the flip side of that is if I were to say I am fit or I am the best shape of my entire life, then as you put the effort in, that effort will start to produce results that will affirm that you are fit, that will affirm that you're in the best shape of your life. And then whatever that goal that you may have, whether it's losing a certain amount of weight or whether it's, you know, running a certain race in a specific time. You are going to be working towards that thing, that mission goal that you have based on the identity of already being that. And so this declaration is something that's extremely important and it's where this entire process starts. So give you a prime example, my current declaration statement uh, for my physical body is I am an ultra runner and we'll unpack the process of, of what happens after the declaration statement in a minute. But I want to just throw that out there that when I say I am an ultra runner, then the things that I do, the activities that I complete, the tasks that I complete should coincide with who I say I am. And it should be so obvious to other people that when they ask me, you know, hey, why are, you know, why are you running all these miles? Why are you doing all these workouts? Why are you training like this? Why are you eating like this? Why are you hydrating like this? The answer is very simple. It's because I'm an ultra runner. That's what I do. But I think it's important to look at what the main excuse is that will pop up on your journey to be in the best physical shape that you can be. It's probably obvious, but the major primary excuse is pain. We've all felt it, whether it's soreness, whether it's pain in the actual act of doing something physically, we know what that feels like all too well. But if you think about it, pain is really just that it's just pain. And I would go a little bit further to say it is simply a transfer of information It's information being passed to your brain from your body that something hurts. Now, what you do with that information once it's passed to you, that's mastery. What you do with that information is what separates the good from the great. It's what separates from the mediocre and average to the extraordinary. And so if we think of pain as just this natural process, that's extremely important. You put your hand on a hot stove, it hurts. That pain was telling, was relaying that information to your brain that that's not a good thing to do. The reality is when it comes to your physical life in this physical pyramid, that relay of information of pain doesn't mean that you don't need to be doing that thing. It may actually mean that you're doing a good job at that thing if pain is coming up. And there's a big difference between pain and injury, right? I'm not talking about, you know, going on a run and you roll your ankle, you get that relay of information of pain to your brain. And that just means keep pushing. Obviously that's different, but the pain that comes from these physical activities is often a positive indicator that you are pushing your body that you are pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And that's where the growth happens. That's where the increase in strength and endurance happens. It takes pain to grow. So what does that look like from a, on a daily basis? Well, the way we break down the physical pyramid is looking at a 90 minute baseline of activity. And in that 90 minutes, 60 minutes of it is going to be some type of physical activity, whether that's running, whether that's working out, whether that's walking, whether that's riding a bike, whether it's hiking, whether it's swimming, whatever that may be for you. Again, based on what your specific mission goal is, it should tie to that. And we'll get that. We'll get into that here in just a second. 
but 60 minutes of physical activity every day. 20 minutes is stretching. I don't know about you, but 20 minutes is a long time to stretch. But the results from actually committing to stretching for 20 minutes in a day over a period of time is going to be transformative in your life. And then 10 minutes, we just look at that as hydration, nutrition. Those are things that are going to happen throughout the day. Obviously, it's going to take longer to eat and drink than 10 minutes throughout your day. But being focused on that thing, just 10 minutes, kind of an arbitrary number we put on that to get to the ultimate um, total of 90 minutes. And the way we base all of these things down, based on Tom Shea's book, Three Simple Things Leading During Chaos, those three simple things are offense, defense, and strategic. So when you're on the offense, it's when you're doing that physical activity for 60 minutes. Stretching for 20 minutes with it would be a defensive strategy. You're defending yourself against potential injury things that can come up from not being flexible, from not having your muscles in a condition that they can be pushed further than they've ever been pushed before. And then strategic is the hydration, making sure that you're getting at least 10 glasses of water in a day. I would say a gallon of water a day um, if you're doing extreme physical activity and that your, that your nutrition is on point. One of the greatest lessons that finally, finally penetrated through my thick skull is that you can't outwork a bad diet. And there's all kinds of studies and research, and I don't care what percentage, if it's 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, I would say it's probably closer to 70, 30 on what you eat versus how you work out. But these are all three critical components to being in the best physical shape that you've ever been. One thing as you go through this process of really mastering your physical pyramid is letting go, letting go of the emotions, letting go of the excuses, those emotional responses that you have towards doing those things that you are supposed to be doing. And one exercise or activity that I think is extremely important is every single day, writing down the emotions that pop up, that, that pop up writing down those excuses that enter into your head as to why you shouldn't go run, why you shouldn't go swim, why you shouldn't get that workout in. This process will make you vastly more aware of what those emotions and excuses are. You'll see the patterns. It may be pain. It may be, this is stupid. It may be, I don't have time. It may be, I don't have support. It, myriad of excuses that it could be, but you'll start to see the patterns over the course of days and weeks and months. And once you become aware of them, then you can actually take the important step of being able to combat those excuses when they pop up. Because if you know they're coming, you can be more prepared to handle them when they do arrive. And those emotional responses are big. Like what, what emotions come up halfway through your run? What emotions come up towards the end of your workout? Just start jotting those down, writing those down in a journal. It'll be fascinating to be able to analyze that over a period of time. Then one other thing in regards to your physical pyramid is once a week, you should push the limits in one area. So let's say your plan is you're going to run, jog every day for an hour. Well, one of those days this week, you need to run further or you need to run faster or you need to push the limit for what you're doing. Maybe you run hills and not just on flat ground. So you're pushing your limit once a week to get outside of your comfort zone and to grow. That way, the next week when you push the limit, you're going to be pushing it even further. And this continual process will allow you to continually level up in your physical life. So let's unpack what we would call the uh, pyramid, what in the world do we call this? Your, it'd be your physical formula based on the five pyramids of human performance. But the formulas are going to be the same for each pyramid. Today, obviously, we're going to go through the physical pyramid. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast episode, it starts with that declaration statement. It's important to understand that you are declaring from a place of nothing. You're declaring something 
without really knowing how in the world you're going to achieve the goal that you have. But just as in the Bible, God declared, let there be light. God was light. He declared that into a void, into darkness. He declared it from nothing. And then there was light. You are going to declare who you are physically before there's any uh, evidence to confirm that that's who you are. Does that make sense? So once you have that I am state, maybe it's I'm an ultra runner. I am, uh, you know, this type of swimmer. I am unbreakable. It could be just I am unbreakable. But whatever that is, that has to become your identity in the way that you see yourself in the way that you attack those daily activities based on who you are. When you look at the second section, which is establishing your goal, we look at this as a, a mission goal, and it needs to be something bigger than you've ever done before. Again, something that maybe right now doesn't even make sense how I could possibly accomplish that. And if you look at that goal as a 60, 90, maybe 120 day goal, a couple of months, it needs to be something that right now I cannot do that. But I'm an ultra runner. I'm going to do these things every single day leading up to accomplishing that goal. The goal should have a what, where, and a when, and it should be very specific. So if it's, I'm an ultra runner, there should be a race on the calendar to where you know on September 1st in Greenville, South Carolina, I'm going to run this race and I'm going to complete this many miles in this time. So the what, the where you're going to do it, and the when it's going to happen. The third section will be needs. What do you need in order to accomplish that mission goal? The things that you say that get you to do what you have to do to keep your word and to honor your word. And so for the physical, it's, it's what do you need to focus on? So if I am an ultra runner, then each time I go run, I need to focus on form. I need to focus on, f focus on foot placement. I need to focus on posture and knee over toe and, and all of these things that, that runners focus on. You have to focus on a single thing every time you do those activities. So based on whatever your mission goal is and based on who you say you are, what are the things that you need to focus on daily to accomplish that task and to be who you say you are and to be able to honor your word in that? And the needs section also needs to encompass the things that you may be getting hung up on. In the last three days during my run, when I got to this point, this happened. Okay, great. Today I need to focus on that point. I need to focus on reserving my energy till I get that point so I can push past that this time. So what are the things that you need to focus on? And more importantly, what are the things that you need to focus on to get past the things that are getting hung up in the process? The fourth section is partners. We say that you should have six partners for every pyramid. And I know that sounds like a lot. sounds like a ton of people. Some of them will be overlapped amongst multiple pyramids, but also some of these things will be applications and resources like YouTube or the map my run app. If you're saying I'm an ultra runner, there's an app that I use every time I run that tracks my times, tracks my splits. That would be one of my partners because I use that to help me accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. Take that a step further. If I'm an ultra runner, then I have a chiropractor that I go to. I have a massage therapist that I go to. I have someone that does my meal prep. That's making my meals to make sure that my nutrition is in check in order to be able to accomplish that goal. So that's three right there. Plus the app that's four. Now you needs two more. So maybe it's a running coach. Maybe it's just someone that you know that runs at an extremely high level that can coach you and hold you accountable. But when you break down those partners, the first three need to give you things to do. And they'll also provide accountability in those things that you're, they're giving you to do. So they may be giving you 
uh, things that you need to eat every day. They need maybe giving you uh, specific workouts that you need to accomplish each week in order to get to where you need to be in accomplishing that goal. The second three or four through six need to give you something that will help you get better. So a chiropractor, which is helping my body stay aligned, is helping me perform better when I'm doing the activities that I need to do. So the first three are giving you things to do and they're holding you accountable. The second three are giving you something to help you get better. Important thing about your partners is they need to know that they're your partners. So you need to talk to them about your goal. You need to talk to them about how they can be involved. And you get, need to get some level of commitment from them to be a part of this process with you. The fifth step is the plan, the action plan. How in the world are you going to accomplish this mission goal, which is way bigger than anything that you've ever done? Some of the key elements of the action plan is you're going to start developing this action plan two weeks after accomplishing the goal. So if my race is on September 1st, then I will start my action plan on September 15th and work my way backwards to today. If I was creating this plan today, why would we do that? Why would we start two weeks after? Well, if you don't plan on the things that you're going to do after accomplishing the goal, chances are you're never actually going to accomplish the goal because you were never planning on accomplishing it anyways. If I'm going to run 75 miles on September 1st, I better have a plan in place for the day after on how in the world I'm going to recover. And I better have a plan in place for the week after on how I'm going to get my body back to moving and gradually increasing that to where I can then get back to my normal routine, a normal workout routine, and then I'll establish my next mission goal and go after that. But unless you have that process thoroughly planned out, it's as though you're not even planning on actually accomplishing the goal. Like I wouldn't go into a 75 mile race and not know exactly what's going to happen the days following if I was really planning on doing that race and completing it and finishing it and accomplishing my goal. And then as you work your way backwards, it needs to be super specific. This is going to take some time, but the good news is you can knock this out in a day. Once that action plan is set, it's set and you know exactly what you need to do each week. But if you look at, you know, what am I doing the day before the race? What am I doing the week before the race, two weeks before the race, the month before that, the weeks before that, and you need to involve your partners in that process. So maybe the month prior to the race, Maybe that's when I bring on that sixth partner. All six partners don't have to be working with you at one time. It can be throughout this process and throughout your action plan that you involve different partners. So if I know that I have a running coach that is specifically someone that's going to help me for prepping for the race a month, two months prior, then I need not only to know who that is and what they're going to be doing, but also they need to know, Right. And so you're going to include and detail out the partners that are going to be involved in this process, but just work your way back from two weeks out after you've accomplished the goal all the way back to today. And then you're just sticking with the plan. The last, which is the easiest in the way that we look at these pyramids is the why. And I think it's interesting because so many other people want to tell you that you need to start with the why. Well, why do you want to run that race? I don't know, because if I run that race, I'm going to be in really good shape. If I run that race, if I can complete 75 miles, that means I'm in peak physical condition. Why? Um, because, you know, my daughter deserves a dad that is in great shape so that he can have energy to engage with her all the time. Like these things are these things are great. But when you look at it the way we look at it, the why becomes very simple. Why am I going to accomplish that goal? Because I said I would, because I said so, because I'm choosing to honor my word. And that's always the answer because I said I would, because I said so. So let's go back through this real quick. So you got the declaration. I am blank. And that identity is tied to whatever that mission goal you have to the mission goal, what, where, and when you're going to accomplish it. 
Three, the needs. So what do I need to focus on every single day, every single time I go do physical activity towards achieving this mission goal? What do I need to focus on that day? The six partners that I've put in place that are committed to me and I'm committed to them to help me accomplish this goal. The action plan working two weeks after accomplishing the goal backwards to today so that I know each week exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Obviously, things will change over time and you can adjust accordingly, but you know pretty well everything you're going to do up from now until you accomplish that goal. And then lastly, why are you doing this? Well, because I said so, and I'm choosing to honor my word. Guys, if you master just this, if we don't even talk about the other four pyramids ever, if you just master your physical pyramid, your life will get better. If you just master getting into better shape, getting into better condition to where your energy levels are through the roof, your confidence, because you're looking better, you're feeling better, that will, that will come out in so many different areas of your life. You might be shocked. It's going to affect your relationships. It's going to affect your ability to learn. It's going to affect your ability to attain wealth. And it's going to affect your faith and spirituality. It's a fascinating process. But if you control your physical life, you have now the ability to control every other area of your life. So guys, with that, this is episode 175 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!